And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to Tom again. And uh, Tom, I love the idea of, of the image of the uh, lizards being outlaws. I like that now, and especially as you guys tool around in your minivan to the pediatrician and elsewhere. Uh, <clears throat> I, I do think that uh, uh, part of what Carolyn was saying is going up against, against corporations. And I know that the music business, of course, uh, is, is uh, filled with those sort of challenges. You're trying to deal with major record labels. Uh, fortunately, in recent years, there's been this move toward independent record labels and inter independent booking agencies and so on. So you don't necessarily have to go that route anymore. But uh, are there any stories you want to share with us, humorous or otherwise, about the lounge lizards running into corporate uh, recording America? Yeah. Well, actually, they have, uh, that's never been a problem for us. They've never been interested in us in any way. Uh, uh, there, there was a guy, well, I won't use his name, but there was a guy in, that was quoted in, in the States one, one time about, well, I, they keep wanting me to do this and wanting me to do that, but I will never go there. Well, I was thinking, I don't think they've ever even talked to you about it, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, that has really kind of gone away. It's, uh, and I was, I guess distressed is the right word for it. Even Rounder Records, which is a 40-year-old uh, independence, put out this wonderful catalog-spanning spectrum of, uh, you know, Cajun, Zydeco, blues, bluegrass, everything. Country, vintage country, even put James Hand's album out not long ago. Uh, and not long ago had uh, Robert Plant and Allison Cross. Anyway, with all of that success, uh, they just sold out to another, after 40 years, they just sold out to Concord Group, which I'd never heard of. And uh, I, f you know, I found that really distressing, because uh, not, oh, a label we were on, Sugar Hill, was uh, at, at one time very competitive in that market. Uh, they were the two of them, at least in bluegrass circles, were, were kind of it. Uh, they were the, certainly the pinnacles of those anyway. And they sold out to uh, a group, the, the Welk group, which is Lawrence Welk's children, uh, who had already bought uh, Vanguard Records, which is a wonderful label of uh, Joan Baez's early work was on Vanguard as Doc Watson. Uh, just So, you know... Aligning yourself with Vanguard seemed like a good deal, but uh, ultimately these were what labels used to be, but uh, after they sold out to the corporations, things changed pretty quickly. And I don't know, we, we were never really courted by the big ones, and, but even the little ones are going away. And I don't do too much hand-wringing about that. I, we, we're just, uh, just Conrad and I, our guitar player and I were just yesterday trying to figure out all of our revenue streams are changing now, and we don't really, we've, we've always dealt on precedence about what do we do with money that comes from this source, well, we use it for that, well, those sources are drawing up and more sources are coming in. Uh, it's kind of cool in a way that we get a check every, or whenever we choose to draw it out. Uh, there's an outfit called TuneCore that handles our online sales, and. I personally don't even know how to buy a song online. I've never tried. I, uh, being on the radio, I kind of don't need to. People mail me stuff all the time faster than I can listen to it anyway. But, but anyway, this, these revenue streams are coming up that uh, we, we don't know what to make of it, but uh, kind of glad they're there. But, uh, but they do allow the musicians to be a lot more independent. And I don't think we'll... I was talking to another Tom Ellis, you know Tom, we were talking about that the other day, that uh, there'll probably never be any more Beatles or Elvises or any of that. Uh, that w everybody can put out the music they want to put out and everybody can buy the music they want to buy. And we don't, r the whole music, in EMI, a major uh, record distributing company, music distributing company, is kind of on the blocks right now to be sold at, pennies on the dollar, uh, you know, stuff, Michael Jackson's stuff was in there. The, uh, just huge labels are now just uh, wandering around, wondering who's, can we get anything for this record company anymore? And we were wondering if maybe that's why Rounder chose to sell out right now, is because they see the 
handwriting on the wall that five years from now they, what they have may not be worth anything. And so they decided to cash out while they could. I don't know. Oh, uh, I think your question was how has that impacted on us? And I don't really know. It, it's uh, kind of still evolving. And the, the online sales are kind of cool and that you don't have to do anything. I, I also handled our mail orders. If you, if you mail, you know, mail us a check or they don't even do that anymore. That comes by PayPal. But uh, I'm the guy that puts it in the envelope and sends it to you. Well, to, you know, to do that, I've got to have a stock over here. I've got to have every CD we've ever had. I've got to have it where I can go get it and put it in the envelope. Well, this online stuff, you don't have to have anything. It, it just goes out. You don't have to pay anybody to press it. It's, and, and it's, it's, it's cool. Uh, but it's, you know, but the, the fact that it's so easy that everybody can do it means that, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I find that at least philosophically refreshing and very good that uh, people can make the music that they want to make. They can put it out the way they want to put it out. And the people that want to buy it can buy it that way. So everybody can uh, make a, a minimal amount of money, at least, doing the music they really want to do. The days of the producers that you know tell you how to comb your hair and how to dress and all of that stuff, those are pretty much over. I mean, there's a few Lady Gagas out there, I guess, who, whoever that is. But, but, but even even at that level, I think, I mean... Who would advise her to dress like that anyway? I mean, <laughs> that's that's got to be her own choice. Uh, but, uh, uh, careful what you say about Lady Gaga. That happens to be my my uh, musical uh, mentor, the uh, uh, role model. So. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Anyway. Well, th well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Well, music obviously has always been such an important part of the populist well, let, culture. Well, let me. Uh, yeah, okay. Since I brought this visual aid along, I thought I want to use it. Uh, this is, I don't know, five or six years old stuff, but the, that we didn't see coming either. Uh, Kathy Mitchell, that runs the local branch of uh, Consumers Union, unbeknownst to us, was a fan of ours, and uh, she contacted us one day and said, we we got a project for you. We want you, we want you to write a song for us, and we're going to get a, uh, a uh, cartoonist to, to make a... A video and and she didn't use the word viral but we later learned that that's was the idea was that if you put up something that's entertaining enough then it will spread on its own and you don't have to pay anything for that and uh, this was in the infancy of it of course we were not we didn't have that kind of vision but she did and she made it happen we wrote a song uh, uh, called the drugs I need uh, she in fact she gave us the uh, the, the drug. well no <laughs> not the drug. She gave us the topic, and that it was. Th th this may be as close to the topic of uh, that we're gathered here for as I'm going to get today, so I don't want to lose the thread, uh, which could happen at any moment. <laughs> anyway, she was trying to put together a campaign to uh, address a bill that was pending that would require pharmaceutical companies that if they had done some testing that did not come out favorably for them, that they had to publish that anyway. Uh, as, it, as it is, you know, they run these tests, and uh, if, if they prove that their drug is not either not effective or is harmful, well, they just go find somebody else to run another test. And, and this can go on and on and on, and uh, nobody knows that it's out there. Anyway, she was pushing for a law to make that happen, and, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know whether that law ever passed or not. But uh, anyway, she she had us do a thing on the pharmaceutical industry, write a song, and the song we wrote was "The Drugs I Need." She got a, a an outfit to do the uh, cartoon for it. It went up. It went on the uh, the Today Show, and the day it went up, they crashed because they had so much demand they didn't have the bandwidth to cover it. They went out and quadrupled their bandwidth in the first hour. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and it, it was it was huge for us, and it was the first time in our career we we've done a lot of political commentary and 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 things, but w this is the first time we ever had any tangible sense that uh, we were doing something that somebody saw. Because I, in the first week, sixty-five thousand emails went to Congress about this, 
And that felt just really great. We've been trying to affect some change for 30 years, and finally, it, it's somebody's, we have some tangible evidence that that's happening. And, yeah. and that's, that's just, uh, we're talking about technology, how it's changing. Well, that's, that's something we never would have caught on if somebody had included us into it, but uh, I, we were glad to be in the vanguard of it. We've since done like five more of those for different consumers' mm -hmm. uh, advocacy groups. Uh, they're, because anything that succeeds that well, everybody else gets on the bandwagon, so it's, it's harder and harder to get noticed. So none of the rest of them have done as well as that first one, but we were uh, really just thrilled that that happened. It is amazing how technology has affected that. Absolutely.